As George Taylor was walking up from his girlfriend's house, he noticed Officer Sanders was looking at him. Taylor was on scene for about 35 seconds before being approached by Diaz by Sanders' command. You can see Sanders bending over and tying his shoes. As Taylor is standing next to his girlfriend, Chief Deputy Sanders, out of camera view, one way or another, requests Officer Diaz's presence, and as Diaz is seen here responding to Deputy Chief Sanders, Sanders then instructs Diaz to approach Mr. Taylor by pointing at him discreetly. This pointing by Deputy Chief Sanders behind George Taylor's back is how the story of the attack begins. Diaz follows the order and proceeds to approach Taylor. Approximately two seconds later, Chief Deputy Sanders is seen giving another signal to Officer Christopher Johnson, as Johnson can be clearly seen responding in preparation for what was about to happen. Approximately three seconds later, all three officers are seen moving in to arrest Taylor. Officer Christopher Johnson grabs Taylor's neck from behind and pulls up violently as the other officers take Taylor down. He then is also seen in a position delivering a ferocious knee strike to the head of an unresisting Taylor, which you can see causes Mr. Taylor's legs to flail up into the air as a reaction. Officer Johnson can then be seen with his hands placed on Taylor's left side of his face, pressing it airtight against the ground and putting all his body weight into his upper body, applying even more pressure to pinning down Taylor's face for an extended period of time. A 12-year-old witness on the scene had this to say. He didn't even do anything. I don't like the police anymore. Back off! Right now! Back off! Deputy Chief Armando Sanders can be seen with the applied pressure from his right knee jamming it into the side of George Taylor's neck for an extended period of time while Taylor is lying still. He is also seen sticking out his left leg to apply as much pressure and body weight to Taylor's neck as possible. That torturous knee to the neck by Deputy Chief Sanders lasts over 20 seconds. The 14-year-old witness on the scene had this to say. They only did this to him because he was black. He didn't do anything wrong. I was right there. Back off. The 13 year old witness on the scene had this to say I don't trust police officers now. They seem prejudiced and unfair after what I've seen them do. The injuries in which Taylor suffered during the altercation were several rib contusions, soft tissue injuries of the neck, broken tooth, facial bruising, chest contusions, bruised wrists, and cervical strains. George Taylor never raised a finger at the officers according to the video, but the three officers claimed that they were injured in a scuffle and were actually seeking felony charges against Taylor. The felony charges could have resulted in five years in prison. Officer Diaz wrote in his arrest complaint that Taylor did not comply with his command to leave or identify himself. There are several commands seen given in his video by the officers. The ones highlighted all have nonverbal gestures associated with the commands being given. Officer Diaz is not seen giving Taylor any nonverbal gestures with his claim of commanding him to leave the area. Ismail Diaz is the officer seen approaching Taylor and placing him under arrest. 
They has filed a workers' comp claim against the village of Montgomery for post-traumatic stress disorder stemming from a 2007 BB gun incident in which he says had him wound up and feeling like less of a man to where he developed a drinking problem. They has reported panic attacks, dizzy spells, and nervous attacks which are being treated with medication and counseling. And even with the mental disability Diaz is claiming, the department still promoted him to sergeant. Officer Diaz's version of the six second encounter says, He told George Taylor to leave the area and he refused. He asked Taylor for his name, Taylor refused, and told Taylor he was under arrest, all in six seconds. Sergeant Diaz and other officers on the scene are heard having a discussion about what charges should Taylor be charged with, suggesting that they are not yet clear on the reason they have attacked and arrested him. And uh, the one that, well, we, we can get him for uh, Deputy Chief Sanders, Sergeant Diaz, and Officer Johnson all have submitted official reports of their versions of what took place in the arrest of George Taylor. From the very beginning until the point of attack, all three officers offer a different chain of events. Two of the three statements offer no explanation as to why Mr. Taylor was approached to begin with. The third statement does offer an explanation as to why Taylor was approached, which was proven by the video to be deceptive. Officer Johnson's statement regarding the encounter with George Taylor said, Perkins and her boyfriend Taylor arrived at the scene from their residence. R.O. then approached Perkins to speak with her, and while speaking with Perkins, Taylor began to enter the scene and obstructing the investigation. As you see here, Mr. Taylor stands next to Vicky quietly listening to what is going on without even saying a word. Mr. Taylor can be seen just glancing around while Officer Johnson was speaking with Vicky. Taylor was singled out by Deputy Chief Sanders before being approached by Diaz. You can see there is no obstructing of justice going on. It is clear that Mr. Taylor is not obstructing the investigation, but instead is being singled out for a confrontation which proves deception on the behalf of Officer Johnson. When Taylor was asked what his name was, he stated that he did not have to advise of his name, and then was advised that he had to leave the scene. Once Taylor was advised that he had to leave, he refused to leave and then was asked again what his name was, to which he then advised that he did not have to provide officers with his name, and was still refusing to leave the scene. At this point, Sergeant Diaz advised Taylor that since he was refusing to leave the scene and was hindering the investigation, he would be placed into custody. By Officer Johnson's account of events, this is how the confrontation takes place. Give me your name. I don't have to tell you my name. Well then you have to leave the area. No, why do I have to leave? Dude, give me your name. I don't have to tell you what my name is, and I am not leaving, because I didn't do anything. Well, you're under arrest. Place your hands behind your back. Officer Johnson's version of the confrontation all took place over a six-second time frame. This is the actual way the confrontation would have unfolded if Johnson's version were the truth. Give me your name. I don't have to tell you my name. Well, you have to leave the area. No, why do I have to leave? Dude, give me your name. I don't have to tell you my name is, and I'm not leaving, because I didn't do anything. Well, you're under arrest. Place your hands behind your back. Deputy Chief Sanders' statement regarding the encounter with George Taylor said, While we were speaking with Perkins, other unknown males walked up to the scene. One of the male adults, later identified as George Taylor, walked up and stood by Perkins. In contradiction to Deputy Chief Sanders' version of events, as you can see, George Taylor walks up to the scene completely alone and stands next to Vicky. By Deputy Chief Sanders making this untrue statement, he is making it appear in his report as if Taylor walked up with others coming to start trouble. There were no other male adults as he reported to be the truth. Deputy Chief Sanders' version does not include the communication he had with Sergeant Diaz telling him to come over or does not include instructions to approach Taylor by his pointing at him. Sergeant Diaz came on the scene and asked Taylor what his name was and he denied giving it and said he didn't have to give it. Sergeant Diaz then advised him to leave the scene or he would be arrested. Taylor again advised he didn't have to leave and refused to leave the area. At that point, Sergeant Diaz advised him he was going to be placed under arrest and I attempted to grab his arm to guide his hand behind his back. We did not know who Taylor was and why he was on the scene. This is how the conversation would have taken place by Sanders' account. Give me your name. I'm not giving you my name and I don't have to. Well, you need to leave or you're going to jail. I don't have to leave. Well, now you're under arrest. Place your hands behind your back. This account of Deputy Chief Sanders would have taken place over 11 seconds to unfold. 
Or if this was the truth, this is what it would have sounded like squeezed into the actual six second confrontation. Give me your name. I'm gonna give you my name and I don't have to. Well, you need to leave or you're going to jail. I don't have to leave. Well, now you're under arrest. Place your hands behind your back. By Sergeant Diaz's account of events, this is how the confrontation takes place. Sergeant Diaz's statement regarding the encounter with George Taylor said, Upon arrival, RO observed Officer Johnson and Deputy Chief Sanders speaking with the female and the male later identified as George Taylor. George Taylor can be seen standing quietly without speaking with anyone while Vicky is speaking with Officer Johnson. RO asked Taylor for his name at which time he stated that he did not have to identify himself to the officers on the scene. Taylor was advised to leave the scene or identify himself which he did not comply. At that point, he advised that he would be placed under arrest for refusing to leave the scene and refusing to identify himself. By Sergeant Diaz's account of events, this is how the confrontation takes place. Give me your name. I don't need to tell y'all my name. Well, you need to leave the scene or identify yourself. I'm not giving you my name. Well, you're under arrest for refusing to leave the scene and refusing to identify yourself. Place your hands behind your back. This account of Sergeant Diaz would have taken 12 seconds to unfold, or if this is the truth, this is what it would have sounded like squeezed into the actual 6 second confrontation. Give me your name. I don't need to tell you all my name. Well, you need to leave the scene or identify yourself. I'm not giving you my name. Well, you're under arrest for refusing to leave the scene and refusing to identify yourself. Place your hands behind your back. Over 20 of the officer's statements can be verified untrue by the video, witnesses, and the uniform microphones of Diaz, Sanders, and Johnson, which are being withheld. Taylor, who was clearly not a suspect of any crime nor posing any threat, as he didn't engage in any dialogue with any standbys or police officers at all. The family filed a lawsuit against the village of Montgomery in 2010, which settled for an underclosed amount. In the traffic stop video, Officer Christopher Johnson is heard consoling Officer Sanders after being visibly upset and frustrated by saying to him, Don't worry, you'll make up for it next time. The day after the 2009 traffic stop, Taylor's family files a written complaint against Officer Sanders. Weeks later, an angry Officer Sanders takes revenge through the court system after the family files a complaint against him for the almost two-hour racial profiling traffic stop by having the driver arrested seven weeks later on fabricated charges of obstructing of justice in the traffic stop. The charges against the driver were dismissed once the traffic stop video surfaced. <laughs> Officer Sanders and other officers are heard in the video conspiring ways to enter the vehicle in the traffic stop video. But after not being able to concoct a legal probable cause to enter the vehicle, Officer Sanders is heard here acknowledging that he was not able to find a legal way to enter the van. It 
attorney for Village of Montgomery, Ellen Emery, said, Montgomery and the individual officers adamantly denied that a racial epithet was used during a traffic stop. They also denied using racial epithet in a lawsuit answer to the news and other media outlets. Although a disciplinary document obtained by Taylor through the Freedom of Information Act shows that Officer C. Johnson was suspended for three days without pay in 2011 for calling Taylor and his family a bunch of fucking niggers in a 2009 traffic stop. The plaintiffs from the traffic stop all have said that they believe the owner of the voice using the racial epithet is really Deputy Chief Sanders and not Officer Johnson. Freedom of Information Act, Taylor requested information related to how many African American police officers have been employed with the Montgomery Police Department past and present. And that was just to know if they had just one reason around their department to not tolerate racism. After a review of the Village of Montgomery's website was done, there was not one African American person seen. After the racial profiling complaint was filed against Officer Sanders, and after the traffic stop video revealed that Officer Sanders was untruthful about several details in his traffic stop report, the Montgomery Police Department promoted Sanders to Sergeant and later to Deputy Chief of Police, second in command for the department. After, after the attack incident, Taylor immediately attempted to obtain the dash cam video recordings and audio from uniformed microphones from every Montgomery Police Department officer on the scene through the Freedom of Information Act request. The first response given to Taylor for his request was a notice to extend the response time an additional five working days due to the time it will involve in gathering the records requested. Chief of Police Daniel Myers gave George Taylor a call to assure him that everything was fine and it likely wouldn't take the entire five day extension period allowed by law to get him the items requested. After not hearing anything back about the request on the final day allowed by law, Taylor contacted the village of Montgomery about picking up the items. He was told he can pick up the items at the Montgomery Police Department before 5 p.m. But shortly after, Montgomery Police Department management analyst Ada Rippinger called Taylor and informed him that they had changed their minds and he can pick up his denial letter instead. The reason given by the Montgomery Police Department for denying Taylor's Freedom of Information Act request was... The Juvenile Court Act mandates that reports in which a minor was arrested, charged, or investigated must be withheld in full. But then they did end up giving Taylor a squad cam video and uniform mic recording from an officer that arrived after the arrest and attack took place. That video and uniform mic recording had the same juvenile info on it that they denied him Sanders, Diaz, and Johnson's uniform microphones for. Taylor put in another request to release all reprimands and complaints from all Montgomery Police Department officers participating in the arrest. That is when Taylor received his response revealing Officer Christopher Johnson was suspended for three days without pay for using a racial slur at the traffic stop. The complaint we filed was a written complaint. It was even video recorded with Detective Reisdorf. They must have destroyed all documentation of wrongdoing against their deputy chief. How could these documents and video recordings just disappear? But as seen here, on November 3rd, 2009, Sharita Hughes went to the Montgomery Police Department to file a complaint regarding the October 26, 2009 traffic stop. The Village of Montgomery has denied George Taylor the complaint his family filed against Deputy Chief Sanders in 2009, saying that they have no record of a complaint ever being filed, saying that there are no documents responsive to your request, and there may have been a complaint made but no documentation was generated as a result and that they only must produce documents and do not have to answer any questions through the Freedom of Information Act. This document right here is an actual copy of the written complaint filed and issued against Officer Armando Sanders by the Taylor family. Taylor's family complaint was filed before the traffic stop dash cam video surfaced and proves to corroborate with the traffic stop video with everything that Taylor's family said happened that night and while even stating that they were threatened and being told the next time they won't be so lucky if they didn't have the kids in a car, even pleading a fear that there will be further harassment, two months later, the driver was issued a complaint from Officer Armando Sanders for fabricated charges, which was signed off by Detective Reisdorf, who is the same detective that found no wrongdoing against Officer Sanders. This retaliation led to a false arrest and false imprisonment 
for the driver of the vehicle, which the charges were quickly dropped with the revealing of the dash cam video and eventually an attack that led to an arrest on George Taylor that was accompanied with more false charges. Despite these documents' existence, Officer Sanders denies that he never issued any such complaint as retaliation, and the village of Montgomery denies the existence of this complaint through the Freedom of Information Act request that Taylor put in. The investigation into the complaint on Officer Armando Sanders performed by Detective Reisdorf turned up no wrongdoing on his part of Sanders. Taylor also showed the traffic stop video and report evidence of falsifying reports, fabricating charges, racial epithet, racial profiling, and conspiracy to the Kane County Public Defender and Kane County State's Attorney. kids in that van so when they are referring to us as a bunch of fucking niggers they mean the kids and everybody the signs you are seeing here are the exit signs of the sicko gas station in which george taylor and his family had just exited moments before he followed us into the gas station and waited until we finished pumping gas and waited for us to leave and then followed us again officer armando sanders is seen here exiting afterwards to pursue taylor's vehicle in his police report he states while on patrol, R.O. observed a black Ford northbound Orchard at Cornell traveling at a high rate of speed. His report didn't say that we had spent 10 minutes together before he decided to pull us over. He left that completely out. He made it appear in his report that our crossing was just a coincidence. We tried to get the footage from the Sitco gas station showing Sanders following us in and out, but the owner, who has daily dealings with the Montgomery Police Department officers, rejected our request for the footage. When the video surfaced months later, it contradicted his report and revealed this to be a speeding fabrication. The fact that the van cannot be seen when the officer exits the Sitco gas station and the fact that the officer is not traveling much faster at a top speed of 63 miles per hour than the top speed of the 57 miles per hour that he says the van is traveling is evidence that would support it being impossible for him to have caught up to the van as quickly as he did. He had to be going 15 or 20 miles per hour faster than us to have caught us that fast, not just 6 miles per hour. Just see it for yourself. Sanders says, our O paced vehicle from behind approximately 75 feet for approximately a quarter of a mile. We were definitely being cautious of the speed limit because we knew we were being followed. Pay attention to the size of the opening between the blue lines shown here. The opening between the blue lines is marking the size of the van's taillights at the start of the officer's supposed 57 miles per hour pace speed. The opening between the white lines marks the size of the van's taillights at the end of the officer's supposed 57 miles per hour pace speed. The size space between each set of lines should be completely the same while the officer is going 57 miles per hour. But as you can see, the size space has doubled by the end of the supposed 57 miles per hour pace, which is confirmation that this vehicle was not paced at 57 miles per hour. While Officer Sanders is going 57 miles per hour behind the van, he is barreling down on the vehicle which also confirms that the van is traveling at a much lower rate of speed than the officer reported. If Sanders' account were true, he would have been evenly paced with us in that video. I guess he didn't think that an innocent person who wasn't speeding would get the video and figure out a way to show that he was lying. He did this just to pull us over, and I absolutely believe he has gotten away with doing this to a lot of people.
yes, he went a quarter of a mile at 57 miles per hour, but he is closing in on the van during that quarter of a mile that he was saying he was a steady pace of 75 feet away, which is clearly fabricated probable cause just to pull us over. Yeah. <laughs> 